Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I just want to give you a, a quick um, overview of what's going on around the world. We are definitely heating up for, no doubt, a world war. Uh, and I am looking at hot spots, of course, all across the world right now, uh, starting with Ukraine. This young lady here, part of this bus bombing right here, very sad situation uh, as the Ukrainian government following Biden's order over this Nord Stream gas two pipeline that Russia and Turkey were going to put across the country is, is really uh, creating a tremendous havoc in eastern part of Ukraine, attacking their own citizens, killing their own people. Uh, this young lady right here was in this bus bombing, and one of her legs had to be amputated as a result. You can see uh, just how bad this bombing was, shelling of this bus here, uh, as the Ukrainian government just does not care about human life whatsoever. So everybody should thank Biden and send him a nice thank you card and uh, time we really appreciate his efforts uh, that he's doing to destabilize Ukraine yet once again. And of course, all the blame of course, is being put on Russia. Media always right there to let you know that it's Russia's fault. Uh, the Daily Star, Russian Ukraine days from war as Vladimir Putin puts 100,000 troops on the border there. Uh, one of their little propaganda articles. We also have the New York Post, Russian troops positioned uh, as tensions uh, mount. Uh, sure, near Ukraine border, as tensions mount, sure, they're going to be positioned there. Uh, you know, the one thing that Russia has been very clear about, especially when it comes to Crimea, is that uh, that's Russian territory. Eastern Ukraine, they've never claimed to be Russian territory, but they have uh, promised to give unwavering support for Eastern Ukraine, the Donetsk Luhansk regions there, because they are ethnic Russians that live in this part of the province. And they're just not going to allow the Ukrainian people to go in there and attack their own people and kill them uh, without provocation. So very, very tense situation. Now, moving on into Lebanon, Lebanon is saying that Israel is using of its airspace to attack Syria, clear breach of international law. Those attacks have been continuing as Israel has been lo uh, lobbying attacks on Damascus, Syria, uh, and clearly in violation of biblical scripture, where God says that uh, you've forgotten the God of your, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Isaiah, and, uh, I think it's chapter 17 or chapter 19, it kind of slips my mind right now. But uh, they're not mindful of the rock uh, you know, of their rock. So shows that both United States and Israel would be uh, involved in leveling Damascus, and that seems to be only evident as we watch uh, Israel constantly lobbying tax against Damascus, Syria. Uh, and then we have the situation down in Yemen. I reported that the other day, even before it made mainstream media, that the uh, fighting in Yemen was really escalating there. Uh, some of the pictures there, you can see some of that fighting there, and that the Houthi rebels are trying to take back this, the, the place of Marib. Marib is a province, northern part of Yemen right there. The Saudis have had control of this, and the Saudis have also brought in reinforcements. ISIS fighters, Al-Qaeda fighters, as I was being told, was being done. And here's a French uh, post on Twitter that also speaks about that. The pro-Iranian regime Hispan TV article says Saudi Arabia is transferring terrorists from Syria to Marib. Yemen, citing an Al-Akbar news, the article says they are answering a call to help the Saudi coalition and its mercenaries who fight against the Yemeni forces in Marib. Uh, so yeah, they're doing that. And what I find interesting is that uh, the Houthi rebels must have the upper hand in this battle because in this article right here, Yemen fighting intensifies in Marib despite calls for a truce. Yeah, when the Saudis are having their um, behinds handed to them on a platter, they're ready for a truce. That's always the way it is when the uh, when the bad guys out there are certainly losing. And I hate to call them bad guys, but let's just face it. Uh, they, they always like to say the Iran is the instigator there in the Middle East. and uh, But we see it's just the opposite. Unfortunately, the, uh, the, the Nephilim-backed Israeli thugs that have been, uh, not, all, not all Israelis by no means, but uh, the, what would we call it, the Rothschild clan is trying to destabilize the entire Middle East and bring about a new world order. Uh, they're the ones that are really behind all of this uh, insanity of endless wars over in the Middle East there. Uh, I just really hate seeing all that happen like that. 
But anyway, uh, Taliban, here we go to Afghanistan. Now we have another issue. The Taliban attack on a U.S. secret base raises fear of a pullout deadline violence. This was reported yesterday from Ben Farmer and a series of attacks on American bases in Afghanistan, including a secret spy base, have raised fears that the Taliban will step up assaults on the U.S. forces ahead of May 1st deadline to pull out. Rockets twice struck a base used by the military personnel working for the CIA in eastern Afghanistan last month. CNN reported an apparent breach of the U.S. Taliban withdrawal deal signed last year. And Kandahar airfield, which is used by the U.S. and coalition troops supporting the Afghan forces, was then hit earlier this week. Uh, then we can move into China. China over there off of Taiwan threatens uh, threat, as new threats to Taiwan. The island's military won't stand a chance. That's what the Chinese are saying. The threat comes amid a series of provocative actions warning in recent days by the Chinese military, the People's Liberation Army, or the PLA, including a series of air and naval incursions into uh, territory that Taiwan claims as its own. Beijing considers Taiwan a renegade province of mainland China, not a sovereign nation. The PLA exercises are not only warnings, but also show real capabilities of pragmatically practicing reunifying the island if it comes to that. An unnamed told uh, that the Chinese state news service Global Times in a fiery article it published Friday morning, it added that people of the Taiwan are dashing into a war that they cannot win. Uh, these are the type of things that are going on right now, friends, around the world. It is a, an alarming rate of these things that are taking place. Uh, we are going are to be looking at too, some of these articles uh, and things that have been shared with us from our friends uh, regarding this, you know, this big saga that's been going on for the last couple of years. Going to be doing that. I'll do that tomorrow with you. I didn't want to really do it on this particular broadcast. We can get this up on YouTube. Uh, don't forget our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can visit our website, watch our videos on our website directly or catch them in multiple other places. Uh, now, right now, because I've got limited internet, uh, I'm loading here on YouTube because it's a little bit faster. Normally I would load this on iConnect, but uh, that's one reason why we're not putting both of these different videos there. Uh, anyway, two, real quick, there is a sister that, uh, that I know has contacted me before about the Mark of the Beast there. She's made a video to me. Uh, I will watch that. Uh, so uh, if that can, the people that have sent that video to me, just let, let her know. I will watch that sincerely. And uh, I appreciate that. Certainly haven't been trying to ignore this. I know there is a lot of people that feel like that what's going on is the mark of the beast. And uh, I have some differing opinions on that. But nonetheless, I do want to look at it with an open heart, open mind there. So God bless you all. Thank you. And blessings.